<laughs> we also had Andrew Yang on in New York when How he was is running. He? He's doing good. He's he just announced something that he's starting called Move Humanity Forward. A, a lot of people thought he was running for mayor actually for New York, really? which he still might. I'm not sure. I don't think he's announced it, but he's starting a nonprofit basically. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> you know what nonprofit stands for? No, tax exempt. That's what it really means. <laughs> Yeah, you know, probably. It yeah. means that they can't make money, so they're going to, you know, I, I know the game. I sit there and chuckle and laugh all the time. <laughs> well, I can introduce you to Andrew if you want. Yeah. We, I don't understand how they can pay everybody. You know, I fought for capitalism. Mm. You know, I, I realize it's 80-20. You know, it's called Pareto's Law. Pareto's Law yep. is an 80-20 rule, right? Something like that. So 20% of the people need socialism. They need to be taken care of. But 80% can make money on their own. So why would I give somebody with the capabilities to be the 80% give them money? Sure. It doesn't make sense to me. What did you think about the UBI? I'm assuming you've seen well, same I, feelings. Well, I think, I, unfortunately, it's coming just because our school system is teaching people to be victims. Mm. You know, I don't know if you saw me on uh, Patrick Ben David. You know, that guy's a, that guy is a genius, man. I love working with him. He's smart, yeah. Yeah. Oh, is he smart. He's, he kind of, I used to work with Tony Robbins, and mm. he has that quickness of brain. Yeah. I'm a, little, I'm a little Hawaiian, I'm a little slower. But anyway, he goes, he goes uh, I told him, I said, you know, during the agrarian age, the church was the center. So every small town had a church. So it was very spiritual, and that was a culture. We shifted the industrial age, and then weaponry came up. So we could now kill. You know, they went, went from swords to guns to machine guns to rockets to drones, you know. So during the industrial age, they started building statues to war heroes. So that was, a, you know, as a Marine, they have the Marines raising, raising the flag on Iwo Jima and they have Robert E. Lee and Grant. And mm. so everybody, everybody respected war heroes and stuff like that. Now they're tearing down Robert E. Lee and Grant and all these guys because America is now worshiping the victim. Victim mentality. A victim mentality. And that's what I said on Patrick Bet David. And a couple of my friends called me and said, you're an asshole. And I said, well, you're entitled to your opinion, but I've been called better, you know, <laughs> and stuff like this. But I said, we're raising victims. Our schools are pumping out victims. And the reason I like this guy, uh, Jordan uh, Peterson, is he says, it's not what a person stands for. You see that? He, he did this great thing. It's what are they against? He says, a lot of times they'll stand up there and say, well, I stand for socialism, but they're really against the rich. And so that's why when you talk about Andrew Yang and uh, Pete Buttigieg and all this stuff, I wonder what they really stand for. Hmm. What, are, what are they really fighting for? So I'm, I'm up front with you. I'm fighting for capitalism. Yeah. You know, I fight for education, that, it, that we should have better education. I'm not saying anything else inside that. I don't have a hidden agenda. Sure, sure. So when these guys are talking about we're gonna fix the homeless, I said, uh, what does that mean? And so what uh, Jordan Peterson says, they're, says they're against the rich. Mm. They're not for the homeless, they're against the rich. And that's where most of the people on the left are. And I don't know that, because I'm not political, not Republican or Democrat. You don't have any re religious agenda. You, know, you wanna believe in God, fine. Don't wanna believe in God, fine. But it's, I wanna know what you really stand for not what you pretend to be standing for. Yeah. So yep. when Andrew Yang says he's gonna start a nonprofit as a capitalist, I already know he can't raise capital. <laughs> because look, I am, I'm doing the same thing, but I can raise capital. You know, I'm, I'm a hardcore teacher. Yeah, what do you think is the difference between you and Andrew Yang in that case? He then? can't raise capital, not an entrepreneur. So what's the skill sets that missing? I don't know, he better, he better figure that one out pretty quickly. Look, understand something. I don't have stocks, bonds, mutual funds, you know why? Why? I can make up my own assets. Hmm. I wrote this book called Rich Dad Poor Dad, 31 million copies, I make $5 a book. You do the math on that one. I create my cash flow game, I think I make six, six, six or seven dollars a game sure. in 50 languages. I know how to sell. Yeah, but don't you have to invest that money once you make it so that it's in a less risky asset I class? I don't even need money. That's the worst part. The next book I'm coming out with is called The Infinite Return is that when you have the mindset of a capitalist, you don't need money. Okay. See, rule number one in Rich Dad Poor Dad is the rich don't work for money. And most people miss that one. But that goes back to 1971 when Nixon took us off the gold standard. Yeah. And money became fake money. Yeah. So anyway, um, 
my rich dad was preparing me to think about how can I make money without make mo- without money. And the way I do it, I create an asset, like a book. I'm not saying write books, because that's a tough industry. But I write a book today, I sell 50 licenses to 50 different languages, and I, ca- I collect royalties for years, the mm. long tail. Yeah. So my money just keeps coming in. From With that, I, I borrow, so let's say I make $10 in a book, I'll borrow $50 to invest in real estate. I step up my basis for depreciation, amortization, and uh, appreciation. Gotcha. That's financial education. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That garbage they teach you about invest for the long term of the stock market, why would I do that? when I can make up my own assets. Yeah. You know, that's what entrepreneurs do. Every entrepreneur should be making up their own assets and staying out of the stock market. That's my point of view, but can everybody do it? No, of course not. Sure. But you, I've, I've screwed up enough times to prove I can do it. <laughs> and my accountant will back me up. Yeah, the guy is an idiot, <laughs> but he does create assets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you have this great core competency, which is the ability to communicate something that's very complicated or what has been made complicated because why simple. would people go to school and pay for that money if it yeah. sounds simple? So you made it really comp- simple using pictures and everything. Right. And you've been able to find leverage. They say that you can find leverage through people, capital, or especially now it's media and software. Yeah. And you've been able to do all three of those. Yeah, and tra- you know, Rich Dad is a brand, man. Yeah. What that's worth. Yeah, no, it's impressive what you've done. Yeah. It's amazing. But I can sell. And yeah. that's why my first job when I left the Marine Corps was to join Xerox so I could learn how to sell because of being Japanese, right? I was really shy. Yeah. And I, I could kill people from the sky. I was a Marine, a you know, decorated hero and all this crap. But I couldn't pick up a girl in the bar. <laughs> and when I said that to my rich dad, he says, your sex life sucks, doesn't it? And I said, oh, it's terrible. He says, because you can't sell. You can't sell. <laughs> and so he says, if you don't sell, you never, you're going to be lonely and horny all your life. <laughs> So that kind of inspired me to learn how to sell. Yeah, yeah. So I joined Xerox, you know what I mean? And, but you have to do what it takes. Mm. So Andrew Yang is a good, smart, very smart guy. He can't sell. He doesn't know how to create an asset so somebody will give him the money. Then he doesn't know how to invest that money so he pays no tax on it. That's why he has to go, he has to go the tax exempt or the, what do you call that? I don't know what he called us. I don't even think. I don't think in their words. Well, he has been able to raise insane amounts of money for as, as tax deferred. You know what I mean? For tax, for yeah. tax advantages. I see what you're saying. Yeah, he's yeah. just in the wrong system. No, I mean he's he, doing good for his for himself. Yes, but as an entrepreneur, I'm I'm kind of in the same. You talk about UBI, right? Yeah, universal basic income. We're on the opposite sides of the camp, but I understand why he does it. If you're an entrepreneur, you don't need a UBI. You don't even need a job. Think about that. See, that's where you're going right now. You will eventually never need a job and you'll never need money if you keep pushing the boundaries of your mental abilities. Mm. That's called the infinite return. Yeah. When I write a book, I have no money in the deal and I collect money for the rest of my life. The royalties. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, royalty, I mean, that's what Richard Branson did, basically, yep. by licensing That's his what Trump brand. does also. That's what Trump does as well. That's what yeah. Bezos does also. How does Bezos do that? Well, he has a company that he has all the millions of people working for him. The money keeps oh, coming I see. in. You see, and then, just and then he, floats it. A, he floats it on the stock market, which is all free money. He wouldn't become a billionaire if he was selling just Amazon. He took he floated it on, on Wall Street. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's, that's, what, that's the game. It's on the B and the I side, not the yeah. E and the S side. Absolutely. 